Congresswoman, I think we have breaking new news on the censorship front, unfortunately. Tell us what has just happened to you on social media. Well, as if my speech hasn't been canceled enough this past week, now Twitter has banned me for 12 hours. And this just happened, I found out from my staff as I was looking at Twitter and I was saying, what's wrong with my account? And it, we got the notification that I've been banned for talking about COVID-19. You see, all I stated on Twitter was that COVID-19, the vaccines should be optional. No one should be forced to take them. Our military should not be forced to take them. So the only things I put on my Twitter page and tweeted was about information that is true statistics and you can find on the CDC. But yet uh, Twitter, who is, who is playing a big part and a role with big tech and Facebook and the White House, apparently the Joe Biden administration and censoring Americans along with the communist cities in communist California who doesn't believe that America first represents their values in Anaheim or Riverside. That's the other city that also banned uh, Matt Gates and I from having a rally. Congresswoman, it's great to see you. You know, the last time you and I spoke, I think it was back in April of this year, you were headed to Ohio for a Back the Blue rally. Uh, that rally ended up being canceled because of security concerns, uh, because of BLM and Antifa. There were a lot of protesters. They wouldn't provide the security for you there. So what's happening in California, unfortunately, is not something new. And it seems to me, when you see what's going on in these cities, that the BLM groups, Antifa, some of them, if it doesn't align with their values, these city officials are okay to silence you. That's right, and here's what's concerning. So imagine this, Matt Gates and I have had three America First rallies, and we have seen President Trump have hundreds of, of beautiful rallies all over the country for five years. He had these rallies. There were no violence at Trump rallies. There have been no violence at our America First rallies. As a matter of fact, they've been nothing but a celebration of our freedoms and America First policies that serve all Americans. But yet these two cities, and, and even in Ohio, because of Antifa and BLM, radical domestic terrorists who are the ones that, that truly cause violence all over the country, because of those people, we are being canceled, and our speech is right. being canceled, and we're, we're being blamed for it. So you can, you can see what's going on. This is communism. This is communism when you have American cities canceling two members of Congress uh, events at private venues. They're also canceling right. these businesses' ability to be able to serve a customer and make money. It's, it's absolutely sure. unbelievable and everyone should be outraged. No, and that's a great point too, because look, it, it takes a brave business to stand up to City Hall, right? The old phrase, you can't fight City Hall. Well, in this case, they chose not to. But let me ask you, Congresswoman, it, it's, it's appropriate, unfortunately, it's sickening, but it's appropriate that you literally got taken off of social media only moments before this appearance to talk about censorship. But we can't just complain about it. It's important to identify the problem. We need to talk about solutions. Uh, you're a sitting Congresswoman. You're one of the leading lights of the America First movement into the 2022 campaign. What specifically should be the agenda of the America First movement. What will we do differently once we are in control of both the House and Senate to make sure that this doesn't happen? What, ha what just happened to you, what happened to President Trump on a lasting basis, what is the agenda to stop this? Well, thank you, Steve. I think that's a very important question. The agenda when Republicans take back the House needs to be a very tough stance. Number one, we need to secure our border. That is the biggest national crisis we are facing as a nation. We have got people flooding in at nearly 200,000 people a month, all kinds of diseases, drugs, human trafficking, terrorists, people from everywhere. And we have no idea where they're, you know, what they're doing and, and why they want to be in our country. Another thing we have to do is we have to crack down on the censorship, remove section 230, these companies should not be protected. They don't deserve the protection, especially when they're working with the current regime to restrict Americans' free speech and censor our voices. So that would be number one on my list. Another thing we have to do that is imperative to our future, imperative to our nation and our security uh, going forward and our children is we have to stand up to China. We just got um, uh, briefed tonight by Dr. Uh, Dr. Yan, who, who is a brave woman that escaped the CCP. She's a virologist right. who has come forward to give information. And China is a very dangerous threat. 
uh, to us now, but also to the future. They want to defeat us um, in every single way, and they have plans to do it. So we need to take China very seriously and make sure that we that they know we will not tolerate what they're trying to do to our country. And Congresswoman, the people, uh, the American people really stand with you. The Hill had a piece out saying controversy equals cash for you as well as Congressman Gates. Uh, they say you're among the top uh, top ranked fundraisers in the House. Uh, it seems like obviously that is really resonating with the American people. That's right. And I'm, I'm very proud to say that and I'm grateful to people from all 50 states that donate to me. Um, and my average donation is under $30. And you know what that means? That's regular Americans that are supporting me. And, and I, can, I can tell you that's a blessing. And it's my honor to serve in Congress, um, not only to serve my district, but to serve all America First Patriots all over the country. Um, they know I'm here fighting for them and I will never back down. And that's why they're supporting me. And I, I just can't tell you how wonderful it is. So thank you to everyone if Congress you're watching. Woman, if you would, and just quickly, please, uh, Paul Hodgkins today was sentenced in a felony. He's going to serve eight months in prison. He's never had any kind of prison record. He was nonviolent on January 6th. He committed essentially trespassing, and yet his life has essentially been ruined. Your thoughts on that sentence handed out today? I think it's outrageous. You know, and I have no problem saying that these January 6th defendants are being treated like pr political prisoners of war. Uh, one of the things I did last week in California is I toured the border, and I also got to see one of the detention facilities that ICE and our U.S. Marshals use. And I can tell you for a fact, illegals that break our laws um, entering our country and also have broken laws and are, are waiting their court dates, they are treated far better than these January 6th de defendants, especially those that are being held in, in the deplorable jail right here in, in Washington, D.C. Now, they've been charged with crimes and they deserve their day in court. And of course, none of us condone the violence that happened on January 6th, but this is beyond out of control. And, and this is not who we are as a nation. We should be a nation that has laws, law and order and justice in our courts, but not a nation that treats people so badly just because we disagree with their political stance and, and want to humiliate them. And, and you know, this is what the Democrats are doing. They want to humiliate all people that support President Trump and are not satisfied with the election outcome and are not happy with the Biden regime that is ruling right now in Washington, D.C. Yeah. And so that's what they're doing is through intimidation. I wish we had more time with you, but really quickly before we go, because they're yelling in my ear, but the January 6th committee, uh, the members have been selected. I know you had wanted to be on that committee. I just want to get your reaction to that. Um, I am hoping to see good things out of this committee, and I will continue to be very vocal about it because I did want to serve on the committee because for once, I want to see people fighting. I want to see Republicans standing up to the Democrats that use these committees like witch hunts against people like President Trump and Republicans in Congress and then the people back at home. So I had asked to be placed on that committee because I want to stand up for truth and I, I will not allow the abuse that we've had to go through, especially after what we saw with the Russian collusion conspiracy lies. And you talk about propaganda. That right there was propaganda that was spread for years. And, and we are, we're disgusted, the American people are disgusted with what happened with the Russian collusion conspiracy and, and all that we had to see over and over with these hearings and committees and people being persecuted in their lives, everyday lives, and accused of things they didn't do, especially President Trump and his family. But this is what we're gonna see coming up with Nancy Pelosi's January 6th committee. And so I hope the Republicans placed on this committee are ready for a fight because we can't allow this to continue anymore. We've got to defend our freedoms and stop communism that's definitely trying to take over our land. Yeah. We sure do. Congresswoman